get your Bibles ready, your phones for taking notes, <laughs> notebooks. We're busy with a series called The Power of Prayer. We've been unpacking the Lord's Prayer, as you know, and in doing so, we've discovered six critical elements in the Lord's Prayer. It just makes it easier for us to understand what we are praying. We're calling it the six Ps. Let's look at it on the screen. It starts with praise, and he ends with praise, and then he, Jesus runs through these, uh, these four other things, and uh, we've covered five of them already, by the way. This morning, we're going to look at the last one, his protection. Jesus tells us to pray for protection. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer quickly, and let's uh, just run through it. Our Father, which art in heaven... Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us. And do not lead us into temptation, listen to this, but deliver us from the evil one. He says, pray this, deliver us from the evil one. Why does he tell us to pray that? Why does he t tell us to basically to pray for, for protection? He says, because there's an evil one. Who is that? Who is he referring to? Satan, the devil, Lucifer. I like to just refer to him as the enemy. Because some people think, oh, you know, it's, it's the devil. That cute little guy, you know, with the horns. and the <laughs> There's nothing cute. There's nothing nice. You know, it's not a, a, a comical picture or anything like that. He is flat out our enemy. The Bible teaches us that because he's come to steal, to kill, to destroy. He doesn't like you or me, by the way, by the way. And so he wants to, he wants to mess up our lives. And that's why Jesus comes and he says, you've got to realize there's an evil one. And on top of that, we're living in a pretty evil world, a world that's becoming increasingly evil and, and, and dangerous and, and lawless. And so Jesus tells us to pray because he says, he says, listen, uh, in the last days, lawlessness will abound. And we see that. We see that when we, we look at what's happening in the Ukraine and especially What's happening in Israel and Gaza at the moment, it's crazy. And so Jesus says in the last days, lawlessness will abound. So it doesn't, it doesn't really surprise us. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy. He says, but mark this. So he, what he's saying is just watch out for this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves and lovers of money and boastful and proud and abusive and disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, and unforgiving, and slanderous, without self-control, and brutal, and not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. And that's exactly what you and I are just seeing every day, just busy unfolding, either in our society, sometimes in our schools, or even in the news, we're seeing this kind of culture just develop, and that's why Jesus is saying to you and me, he's saying, hey, these things are going to happen. That's why it's all the more it's, it's important for you and me to pray. The good news today is that God is our protector. We, we saw last week he's our provider, but he's also our protector, and he wants you and me to pray, and that's why he's given us so many promises in the Bible. And I want to run through just a couple of promises, almost just to lay the foundation for us, for what I want to share, just to build our faith. So let me just read just a couple of promises. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? Listen to this. The Lord protects me from danger. So why should I tremble? Psalm 121. The Lord keeps you from all evil and preserves your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Isn't that a beautiful picture? 
just God keeps watch. God keeps watch. He knows exactly what's happening in your life and my life, and He's watching all the time. Let me read Proverbs chapter 3. You need not be afraid of disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked, for the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. What is a trap? It's unforeseen, the unforeseen things, but not just unforeseen by you and me. It's the things that, that enemy, enemies or evil people may plot against us that you and I are not aware of. Because a trap is something that, that we don't see, but it's, it's waiting there. It's lurking in the darkness. And God says, He says, don't worry about those things. He says, he says I'll keep your foot from being caught in that. And then Psalm 4 verse 8, I will lie down in peace and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. If there's anybody here, and you don't have to put up your hand, if there's anybody here who battles a little bit at night because there's just a little bit of anxiety, go back to Psalm 4 verse 8, I will lie down in peace and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will Keep me safe. Amen. All right? <laughs> and so there are many more uh, uh, promises here in the Word, and for the sake of time, I, I can't go through all of those. But, but really what I want to do this morning, and what I want to remind you and me, is that those promises are for us, by the way. And, and they're, not, not, they're not for everybody. They, they're not for the unsaved. They're not for, for the, the, the pagans. The Bible refers to the unsaved as pagans. The promises of God are for the children of God. Remember that, all right? Because for the unsaved, they, they, they are outside of God's family. And so they are outside of the covenant. They're outside of God's protection. And so this is specifically for you and me. You see, you've got to understand that God has made every single man and woman on the face of the earth. And God wants every one of us, Bible says for all men and women, to be saved. All right? That's His heart. But when you and I decide not to follow God, not to follow Christ, what we're basically doing, think about it. We're in rebellion to God. And, and we're choosing, it's a choice, where we're choosing to live outside of His will and outside of His ways and, and His word, but also outside of His promises, all right? And so for, for, for people who don't serve God, they're living outside of the promises. I've said this before, but my children have rights and privileges that the neighbor's children don't have. The neighbor's children have certain rights and privileges that my children don't have. So in the same way, you and I as children of God, we've got to realize we've got rights and privileges because we're his child. Isn't that good news? All right. So you'll, you'll see that this theme, the theme of protection runs right throughout the Bible. And that's why we've got so many promises here in the Word, promise upon promise upon promise. That's why Jesus tells us to pray for protection. That's why we'll see so many scriptures that tell us to call upon the name of the Lord. And so I want to show you that quickly. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. And so what it's saying is there is safety in the name of Jesus. There's protection in the name of, of Jesus. Romans 10, 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why must we call upon the name of the Lord? Well, Psalm 138 gives us the answer. It says, because your promises are backed by all the, the honor of your name. And so there's power in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth 
and under the earth, all right? And so that means, that means in heaven on earth and under the earth, it's referring to the demons. Even the enemy, Satan and his demons, have got to bow, have got to submit to the name of Jesus. When you and I use, when we call upon the name of the Lord, when we use the name Jesus, there's power in that. That's why Romans 10, 13, we've just read it. It says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, we tend to think of that in terms of spiritual saving. And it is. But there's a physical element involved as well. Because that word saved means to protect or to deliver. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be protected will be delivered, all right? And so my point simply is that God wants to protect us, but you and I have got to call. We've got to pray, all right? Now, I'm not saying today, please, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have burglar bars, security gates, <laughs> and, and alarm systems, and, and, and you shouldn't do what you can to... to you know, to be safe and to stay safe and avoid certain areas, especially at night and things like that. I think that's smart and that's wise to do that, but I'll tell you what's even smarter. To call upon the name of Jesus and to trust in Him. Let's do what we can do. But better than that is we come and we trust God to protect our families and to protect our possessions and to protect our businesses and and we've got to do that. It's smart to do that. All right. Now, I realize some people battle with this because they can't uh, touch God and feel Him. Uh, it's not tangible. And so they, they, they want something that's tangible that they can hold on to, you know, like, like Alpha Security or CMS or, or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. All right. But, but why put your, your trust and your confidence in something or someone who's limited in power and ability when you can turn to the one who's completely unlimited? Come on. And so God invites us. He says, all you got to do is call upon my name. That's it. Listen to what David prays here in, in Psalm 18. He says, the Lord is my rock my fortress, and my Savior. My God is my rock, in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the strength of my salvation, and my stronghold. And then he says, I will call on the Lord, who is worthy of praise, for He saves me from my enemies. Notice how he says, I will call, I will call. Upon the name of the Lord. Now, you know, we, we may say, oh, but, but you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm your child, you know. Why, why don't you just protect me? And God says, hey, this is the way I've designed it. I'm telling you, call upon my name. Why do you think Jesus tells us to pray for protection? He sets the example. He says, hey, God wants to protect, but there's something you've got to do You've got to call upon the name of the Lord. And then before Jesus left this earth, he prays for his disciples. And you know what he prays for? He prays two things. Protection for his disciples and unity. Two th I mean, there's a lot of stuff that he could pray for. But he asks two things, protection and unity. Now, if God was just automatically going to protect them, he wouldn't have prayed that. But obviously, protection is so important that he does it. Why does he do that? Because there's power in prayer. And prayer activates God's power, and it goes to work on our behalf. And that's why Jesus says, pray. And so again, I want to say to you, this whole theme of, of, of God being our protector, and you and me having to call upon the name of the Lord, you can see it right throughout the Bible. Let me give you one or two more scriptures Quickly, I, I really just want to, through Scripture, stir your faith this morning. As Psalm 50 says, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. But God, why don't you just deliver me? Hey, 
I said, call. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, and you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. When does God listen? When we call. Psalm 91 says, He will call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble and will deliver him and honor him. He will call upon me and I will answer. When does God answer? When we call. And so it's very clear from Scripture that there's a responsibility on you and me to pray protection, to call upon the name of the Lord, to start our day and say, Lord, I'm just committing this day to you. Thank you for everything. I'm praying over my family. I'm praying over this and that and the business and, and where we're praying for protection, we're putting that into being. You see, one thing we need to understand, that as Christians, you and I are not immune to difficulties and trouble. When we get saved, God doesn't say, all right, now come, let me wrap you in cotton wool so that you're safe. Nothing bad will ever happen to you. Nowhere in Scripture does it tell us that. Let me read to you what it says here in Isaiah chapter 43. When you go through deep waters and great trouble. Notice it doesn't say if, when. Because there's a time in your life and my life when we go through deep waters, figuratively speaking. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, God says, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The fires will not consume you. Notice here, when, when, when. Listen, when the children of Israel faced the Red Sea, did God take them around and, and give them a way out? Did He give them a, a, a freebie, a pass? No. He took them through it. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faced the fiery furnace, did God take them around? He took them through it. When Daniel faced the lion's den, God closed the mouths of the lions and took him through it. And so there are going to be times in your life in my life, where God is going to take us through stuff. And it may be a retrenchment. It may be cancer. It may be a divorce even. It, it may be some kind of loss in our lives. And we're going to have to face it and go through it. And when we do, when we go through that thing, we can know one thing. God is there. And all I've got to do, I've just got to ask Him for protection. All I've got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. Because one of the names that God gives Himself is Emmanuel, God with us. And so it doesn't matter whether we go through good times or bad times or horrific times. God is with us. And so we've got to call on His name. And that's why David says in Psalm 23, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, even though the worst thing can happen to me, he says, I will fear no evil. Why, David, why? For you are with me. Can you see that? Doesn't matter what we go through. We've got to remind ourselves God is with us. And so the, the, the way I see it, you and I will go through difficulties and and challenges. It's part of life, but God's promised to go through those things with us, and all you and, you and I have got to do, we've got to call upon the name of the Lord. We've got to come and ask Him for protection right within that difficulty, and then, and then we know <laughs> there's nothing that happens to us that God cannot use in our lives. Somehow God's going to use that. Somehow God's got a purpose with this. Somehow God's got to make good come out of this. All right. Now, just in closing, here's something else I want to show you quickly from Scripture. We all know the Scripture very well in Malachi chapter 3 that says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. W what is the storehouse or, or my house? It's God's church, all right? 
That's the church. He, and then he says this. He says, bring it into my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. And so what God is simply saying is, is when you start tithing, he says, he says, I bless you. You'll have abundance in your life. Now listen to the next verse. This is what I want you to see. He says, then I will rebuke the devourer for you. Who's the devourer? Again, Satan, the enemy. I'll rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground. Nor will, will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. And so God is simply saying here, if you will honor me with your tithe, he says, I will honor you. He says, I will look after your income. Not only am I going to give you abundance, he says, but I'll protect it. Because so often, I mean, we have good income coming in and, and we've done good deals or whatever it is. And man, we're not even through the month yet and it's all up, it's gone. It's like it, we're trying to hold, it, hold water in our hands. Isn't that the case? What's happening? There's a devourer. There's an enemy. There's unexpected expenses and nonsense. And what God is saying, He says, if you'll honor me with your tithe, He says, I will rebuke the devourer. He says, I will protect your, your crops and your grapes. What is that referring to? Your income. That's what God is saying. And so all God is saying here, He's saying to you and me, He says, hey, He says, you look after my house. I will look after your house. Now, now don't misunderstand what I'm saying. This, this is not protection money. Have you ever watched a movie where the mafia is involved and they, your little businesses down the road all pay protection money? This is not the Christian equivalent of protection money. All right? But I think what does happen here is it shows God our heart. Because you see, when we give God first place in our lives, if we really love Him, what does is, what is Jesus say? He says, if you love me, you'll obey me. If you love me. And so when, when you and I give to His house, there are a couple of things that happens. There's obedience, where I'm saying, Lord, I'm just being obedient to your word. And I'm acknowledging that everything I have comes from you. And I want to show you, Lord, that, that I love you. Now listen to what Scripture says. Here's a last Scripture for this morning. He says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him and I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. And so it's clear from Scripture that God's protection is for God's people. How do we know it's God's people? Well, they've given him first place in their lives. They, they love him and they obey his word. And so God wants to protect his children. But he, he, he gives you and me one or two things to do. He says, I am your protector. He says, but I want you to be faithful in your finances. And then he says, and I want you to, to pray for protection. Because there's an enemy, there's a devil. And he causes evil all the time. He says, but my power is greater than his power. For greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. And so all you and I have got to do is come and call upon the name of the Lord and come ask God for protection. Just like last week, I showed you how we've got to ask for provision. God says, now, I want you to ask for protection. Let me just end with this last thought quickly. Why doesn't God just do it in any case? <laughs> Why doesn't He just provide for us and just protect us without us doing anything? It just comes our way. It just comes our way. If He had to do that, we'll never acknowledge Him. We'll never look up to Him. It's almost like we don't need Him. And God knows that's not good for us. And so God wants us to constantly look up and to say, Lord, give us this day our daily bread and keep the evil one from me. Lord, I'm praying for your protection in Jesus' name. Why do you think we pray in Jesus' name? Because we're calling on the name of the Lord as Scripture teaches us to do. Amen.
All right, come on, let's stand. I want to pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Father, that we can, that these deposits are made in our lives every week. And we can go from here and exercise the authority that you've given us through prayer. And so I ask for every one of us, Lord, that we won't be casual about prayer, but we'll realize what you want to do through us and that we'll start, start exercising our authority in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great week.